sweet here i am okay guys uh hello okay cool um all right so bef as i'm start as people are starting i'm i never well, i guess i'm i'm about on my normal I'm, i actually was a little bit you should be hearing me by the way and i was actually um just saying uh i i, I hardly ever am like this ready <laughs> and I'm especially excited because it only took me two hours to set up today and it normally takes three and so this new little crazy system that <laughs> my COVID crazy produced actually worked and I'm really stoked that's what this white pipe is I'll show you guys the behind the team sometime, uh, behind the scenes some other time, but yeah. No, but it normally takes me about three hours to set up and you guys see how that goes. <laughs> I always miss something anyway. Um, no, that's three Baxter hours and I, I will be the first to admit that I don't have the most efficient mind in the world, but that is three solid hours of like not checking my phone and, and so to have it cut down to two hours, to have it like at 33, uh, you know, percent off of that, that feels awesome. So, um, thank you guys for saying hello to everybody, and uh, people probably are not used to me starting on time. Now, I wanna, one of the reasons I wanted to make sure I started on time today is that to make this class work, I need you to go get a pair of socks. It could be any socks, um, anything, and I'm going to wait a couple of minutes to let you go do this. If you're out in the park or somewhere, um, that sucks. But if you have a chance, run up to your room, if you're in your room, <laughs> I need you to grab a pair of socks. The longer, the better, but it doesn't matter, and it could be anything, and I'm wearing these white, horrible, girls will break up with you tube socks right now uh, because they're white, and they're gonna show up a little bit better, and they're long uh, so that you can see. So you'll need that prop uh, tonight. It's always a good idea to bring a blindfold if you wanna get the full hoop path effect or at least the full Baxter effect. Um, it's always good to run it through your home stereo, but right now I need you to go get some socks. It could be any socks. They could be little booties, if that's really what you want to do. Is that what they're called? Booties. What are the really small socks called? I don't know. Um, okay, yeah, they could be called anything, um, but go grab those, and 
while you are running upstairs, I will just fill the air with some noise. Thursday, uh, one of my good friends, Bonnie, who sometimes shows up, is doing a shoulder hoop class, I think this week. And so I don't think I want to do another shoulder hoop uh, class. So I think what I'm going to do on Thursday is a notes from my practice class, which is where kind of like an old school hoop path class before they really had themes. Um, I would just share notes from my practice because I've, you know, you guys, the cool thing about you guys uh, is, um, and Tara, honestly, is, is I've been hooping so regularly, um, even more <laughs> than I have been. And so a lot of these like suggestions or things will come up like a song that I really like to a technique. And so Thursday's class, I think, will be that type of class. So there won't be a specific theme. I won't, I won't have like a mojo to it. Um, but it'll just be me hopping over my personal practice and sharing uh, foundational things with you. Um, I'm hoping that you guys uh, are seeing me in the same quality uh, that I usually am. Please let me know if you ever notice a severe degradation, and it's not just my crazy internet being weird, but if it's a real degradation, please uh, let me know uh, from podcast, I mean from stream to stream. I'm so used to calling them podcasts. Um, okay, so uh, that's hopefully given everybody time to, uh, sweet, is Shana, is that you? Okay, I think that's Shana. Okay, it looks good. Okay, cool. I am actually, for you nerds out there, I'm actually broadcasting in a smaller resolution. Okay, so I'm, small, I'm, I'm broadcasting in a smaller resolution, which may actually look better. And we're going to work on what the replays will look like. Honestly, it takes so long for me to upload the high-quality versions that I'm really trying to get this version suitable enough that people don't need the high-quality version because it takes 14 hours with my internet. By the way, I'm in the, you know, <laughs> I think the island that Tom Hanks got stuck on in Castaway had better internet than I do. <laughs> like, it is so slow here. Um, which is why I don't join the Zooms, guys. Like, the reason I, I would love, I'm trying to figure out a way, and I may talk to Case with them, may reach out to you to see if there's a way that we could, I could somehow, without uploading, watch um, the Twitch and then stream it into the stream, uh, which I think we can totally do that part. But I, if I'm uploading, I don't think it's going to work because I need everything I have to just to get to you guys right now. Okay. So I think I've given everybody time uh, to get started. And I want to spend most of the sway. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe there's a way. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe, let me see. I'll, we'll, 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 we'll communicate later. Because what I'd love to do is on these jams especially is to be able to stream you guys into the, onto the green screen <laughs> behind me. I mean, well, that would be the <laughs> dopest thing in the world. But I just can't upload at the same time. Okay. So I'm gonna, I don't want to get lost in geekdom there. Um, let's talk about the class. I'm going to spend a lot of time setting this up before. Most of you that are watching, I, I have no idea who's here and who's not here. I love it when you say hello. Um, most of you know this background information, but the MyDan is just a teaching meta, or not just, I shouldn't have said that, but it's a teach, very powerful teaching metaphor for me, and its power has been proven to me over time and one of the ways that that power has been proven is that sometimes a story or an idea from a story goes further than Jonathan Livingston Baxter's own teaching could have taken them. Like the story helped. And tonight is one of those stories. Tonight is basically a technique story. It's not a long story. It's not much of a story. But it opens up a technique and a way of moving. And it honestly, especially my Brooklyn crew, they might remember this, like it changed the game on Two Point. And the whole room, I have been trying to teach Two Point for years. And I shared the story of Kaya's, and suddenly everybody was doing it. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to, Kaya is the warrior, okay? Now, one thing to know is that Kaya is at this point of the story, she's probably 
20, early 20s, okay? And she is meeting Jula the Quiet, Ju- uh, my, uh, Kaya the Warrior, that nickname given to her by tribes people, uh, not her tribe, and then Jula the Quiet, the nickname given to her by Ashwa, they are about to meet, and they are very similar age. So they're roughly the same age, and Kaya the warrior meets Jula the quiet, and she admires her. And even though Jula the quiet is in some ways kind of like the complete opposite of Kaya as far as like her aggressiveness and her attitude, but Kaya was, you know, human like we all are, and she saw in Jula the quiet. She's the warrior, the quiet. She saw these qualities that that she wanted to be, and she wanted to be those qualities because she was those qualities. And she really felt that a lot of her anger came from the angst of that distance. And so when she meets Jula the Quiet, rather than push her off because she's this opposite being, she, I mean, if she was a hugger, she would have hugged her. And so that's where our story starts off tonight. Hey, Sharon. Okay. All right. And hopefully I've got everything worked out. Press in. Audible press in. the time of the meeting of Kaya the Warrior and Jula the Quiet, they were both searching. Jula the Quiet was literally searching for her Maidan sistrum that had scattered about. Kaya the warrior was searching for the next Kaya the something. She had grown tired of fighting. She was good at it because she had to do it But it was wearing her down. And her days were long. Sometimes very big. Jula was traveling through the forest where Kaya the warrior and the little sisters lived. And their normal routine was to scare anyone that came into those woods as a way of protecting them from any harm. And yet Jula the Quiet strolled into that deep, dark forest her circle on her shoulder and the little sisters dressed as demons and forest creatures and shrubs 
did their best to scare Jula as she walked deeper and deeper. One of the little sisters ran back and told Kaya, She's not scared. Kaya threw on her witch wardrobe. She dressed the part. And she went out to see what the little sisters could not scare away. And then she saw her. She saw Jewel of the Quiet. Big brown eyes. And she, as so many had in front of Jula the Quiet, softened. And she knew there was no threat here at all. Audible breath in. I don't know what they said to each other. I don't know what their first lines were. But I know that Kaya trusted Jula from the moment I saw her. And I know that Jula trusted Kaya in that same shared moment. And without any choosing, they were sisters. of you now that called you? What are the qualities? That you miss being? Audible breath. Mm -hmm. What I need you to do is I need you to grab your socks. And then you are going to put them on <laughs> your hands, your wrists. I hooped for about an hour and a half <laughs> like this. It's awesome. All right, now the goal is that we don't want to uh, let me, hopefully I can still uh, mouse here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and start this because this is sort of the next thing we're going to talk about is, well, I guess, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> All right. So, 
Um, Jula, Kaya, their friends, we'll go ahead and sway just for a second so we don't lose too much gas here, but their friends and their, you know, friends on all the different levels. And so Kaya is a mover for sure. And she really admires Jula's movement and kind of like these other personality traits that she wishes she had or characteristics of herself that she sees in Jula that she admires. She admires this movement one. And the thing that she admires about Jula is how she moves, she says, quietly in the wind. That Jula moved quietly in the wind. And she wanted that. <laughs> she wanted that quietly in the wind. And so she asked Jula how she would get that. And Jula said, I need you to call on Naya the free. This is where our story starts. And so Kaya said, of course. And Jula said, Naya the free was a little my Dan never born. And her mother grieved her so hard. And she was able to live in the dream world so that her mother could play with her. Naya the Free has only known the dream world, so she's a bit of a trickster. She doesn't understand narrative or arc. And when the Maidan would call on her as they would fall asleep, Naya, Naya, they were inviting her to show them things. So Kaya falls asleep, and as she's falling asleep, she calls out, Naya, Naya. And when her third eye opens, Kaya is in a big, dark room. She can't even see the walls around her. The floor is this really dark wood. And it looks like there's like fire off in the distance. She feels a little scared because you can't see more than 10 feet. And she reaches for the dagger that her mother gave her and the hoop that she stole. And when she reaches for these things, she realizes that her arms have become snakes. Naya the Free has given her snake arms. Kaya hates snakes. She's been afraid of snakes. And she freaks out. Her arms move all over the place. She thinks of Jula. She thinks of the quiet. And she breathes in deeply. She breathes all the way into the vision of each snake. She takes another breath. And she makes peace with the fact that her arms are now snakes. She allows them to be snakes. She lets go of the fear she had.
watching, don't be afraid to look at your hands if your eyes are open. And if you can, even inside of the socks, if you can keep the hands thinned, because it will really open up new ways of turning and feeling energy. class it means you're a weirdo <laughs> like me <laughs> okay so um i'm gonna try to keep this as real as you guys got it okay <laughs> all right so remember in the beginning of class when i was talking about how this one story sort of changed in a way how um it kind of changed in a way how people related to two point and I think that the reason that the story did that is that we stopped seeing our hands as hands and we saw them as snakes through the story of Kaya and the snakes and so we thought of snakes, our hands think of snakes, and snakes don't have thumbs. And they can grip every now and then if they want to with their bite. But for the most part, snakes rarely bite. <laughs> Sweet Jackie. Okay, no, this is a very, very hoop pathy class tonight. Because that's the story. But what makes it hoop pathy is that we're actually wearing sno socks and we're actually going to try to feel what Kaya might have felt. And one technique, if you're not sure what to try, is tracing. Oh, let me bring that music up, sorry. We're going to get into two point in 
a second, but right now I want you just to flow the snake hand. his hands she couldn't hold tightly and she had to be with her movement more Dana? Sweet, that's cool. You're just joining us. You need to grab a pair of socks. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna, this is mostly just a uh, exploration type class. And of course, if you get tired of any of this stuff, you can do it. It's your class, it's your time. You can bounce as you need to bounce. So, but one of the fun ways that the snake hands can really help you is to start to feel this connection in two point that creates three point. So there's one, two, three points of contact. And that point of con that third point of contact <laughs> is what he has. Yeah, you can yeah, maybe you can take them off and draw it. But that third point of contact is what we're gonna play with on this next exercise with the snakes. So if I'm holding the hoop here, and I'm holding it, I'm leaning it against my knight's side, right? 
then if I bring an arm in and trace it, it's going to move around me that way. If I'm holding the hoop on my sh arm, just anywhere on my arm at all, and I bring one of my snakes in and push it with the other one, then I'm making travel around me. Now I'm within my hoop. I could be without my hoop. So what I'm going to invite you to do now is to play with the idea of three-point contact. And all of that means is a at least three points of contact. to feel it if you're new to this is the hinge the hinge is an awesome three point because we're used to it uh, nice let's pull my socks up so I don't look like a bum Snakes. 
any more than her body wasn't fit. be awesome <laughs> they say they want googly eyes for their socks okay so now um i want this to be mostly flow based so i'm not going to share too much more i think you get the metaphor take off the socks of course if you don't like them anymore but here's where just for me personally um the socks this technique really helped me the most and what the technique helped me do was to think of my hands more snake-like and so that, oh, let me take the dirty thought. It's not actually dirty, but it tells you how old this is. <laughs> but to take my snake hand and to think, okay, I'm gonna push with the top of the head one way and push with the top of the head the other way. And then what I was doing was switching my, that snake head was just moving from one it was like, I don't know if you guys, well, I mean, of course, everybody, because of Disney and Jungle Book and whatever, thinks of the hypnotizing snake, right? And so if you imagine that your hand is kind of this hypnotizing snake, and I'm, I'm keeping it on my shoulder just so I can feel that. And this might seem like completely ultra hoop nerd, and it is. But this technique starts to open up even more things. And I can put the hoop on me now, like I can be inside of it, so my neck's inside the hoop. And I can start to play with this movement. And what it does is it allows me to break. Do you see that? So if I'm doing these penny rolls, right, or something, I can just you know, send the snake head up and stop the hoop. Eyes for the socks. <laughs> and so what it really, you know, and I don't want to over-geek this because this might be one of those revelations that only means something to me, but what it really opened for me was just a new way of influencing the hoop where instead of holding it, instead of gripping it, instead of it less re resting on me, I was pushing it while something else bared its weight. And then that arm. All right, I'm gonna put some music on. I'm gonna demo this technique a little bit to help sell it to you. Get my sock on. I like to get my sock on before I go to the club. All right, here we go. So let's say I'm doing this movement here. Okay, this old school penny roll. Inside the hoop, I'm inside. Hoops hanging on night. Prayer hands. And then your snakes are gonna push out, right? I'm gonna push out. And then this, whatever snake I'm passing to, whatever snake's gonna hold the weight, that elbow is gonna stay high and push, the snake head's gonna push it down. And the other arm, the other snake, is gonna reach back in and then receive the hoop curved in a snake. inside the whole time I'm to do this one I'm inside the hoop now I can do it outside but right now I'm inside and then once you get this move and you have it down that's where this little like snake break can be fun because I can just send a hand out all right let me bring the music up and give you a chance to play with that Let's move this all. 
all, this is what we call hanging point. This means that the hoop is always hanging from you. Hanging point. And then my snakes, the beauty of this story for me is that they could go on either side of the wall of the hoop and push that wall. The socks are getting old at this point, or you want to try the, the technique without socks, don't come stay. And then if I want to go all the way around, the snakes are even more useful, and I can stop it. This is the reverse of this. See what I did? Boom. Oh. All right, I'm gonna let you just listen to music and explore. this song into a free hoop. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope this helped a little bit. Uh, 
switch here. That's awesome. like imagining you have snakes for hands. story in the original version of the story her the snake's mouths are bound geeks out there. Two point with snakes into swing is super surreal and fun. Thursday, we 
doing notes from my practice, just kind of an all-purpose movie learning class. <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true, Chris. You know, like, the thing is, this guy is so big. I mean, this is going to take two seconds to take over the flow world. <laughs> no, actually, you know, after this dream, Kaya loses her fear of snakes and really begins to study them because she's always wanted to be intimidating as snakes are. But with their gentleness and their discipline and their sleekness.
on stage over here. I didn't say hello. Just saw that. There is the playlist. Okay, guys, we're going to do one more song. Oops, I got the music blocked out. We'll do one more song and call it a night. Thank you, guys. Next class is Thursday at 7 o'clock. Sweet, you guys are welcome. This is our last song for those of you that want to stick around. Appreciate it.
guys for the donations that are coming in right now. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys, see you Thursday.